Chaksurun Militan Jena Tasma Shri Gura Varinamaha Vancha Kaupa Tarubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bayevacha Patita Nam Pavanebyo Vaishnavibyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Atvaita Gadadha Shiva Sadigor Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So we're reading the Krishna book and we're on chapter number I think it's what 59 the killing of Bhomashura Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, Bomasura delivered. So we heard how Lord Krishna uh, was approached by Indra. Indra requested Lord Krishna to help because Bomasura was very powerful and Bomasura had stolen things from Mother Aditi, who is the mother of the demigods. And he'd also captured. 16,100 princesses and he was keeping them prisoners. So Lord Krishna decided to go there to deal with him. Mm -hmm. Okay, but me, <laughs> So, uh, Lord Krishna, first of all, fought with one demon who was guarding Bomasura. There was a Mura demon, and Lord Krishna killed him. And then all the sons of the demon also, they came, Krishna killed them. And then Krishna fought with Bomasura and killed him also. So the mother of Bhumasura was the uh, personification of Mother Earth, Bhumi, and she came to Lord Krishna and offered prayers, and she also brought the things which her son had stolen. So Lord Krishna was given the the earrings of Mother Aditi and also uh, other items which her son had stolen and Lord Krishna went with Satyabhama, his wife Satyabhama, they went to uh, give them back to Mother Aditi in the heavenly planets. Oh, we, I forgot to mention that the 16,100 princesses were all freed by Krishna and Krishna agreed to accept them all as his wives and he sent them all to Dwarka. So after all that, Lord Krishna and Satyabhama went to the capital of the heavenly planets. The cap where Mother Aditi lives with the demigods, headed by Indra. 
กฤษณากับสเตวามาก็เดินทางไปที่สวรรค์แล้วก็ไปที่เมืองหลวงของสวรรค์ที่มีพระเนี่ยอาศัยอยู่ที่นั่นด้วย So Lord Krishna and Satyabama entered into the palace of King Indra, where King Indra was with his wife Sachi Devi, and King Indra and Sachi Devi welcomed Lord Krishna and Satyabama. So Lord Krishna then gave Indra the earrings of Mother Aditi. So when Krishna and Satyabama were returning from the heavenly planets from the capital of Indra, at that time Satyabama remembered Krishna's promise to give her a parajata tree. So Satyabama thought, since I've come to the heavenly planets, now's my chance. I should take the Parijata tree, and she took a tree out of the ground. And placed it on the back of Garuda. So some some time before this, Narada Muni had brought a parajata flower. One flower, and he gave it. To, he gave it to Krishna's most senior wife, Rukmini Devi. So Satyabama is like the number two wife. She's just behind Rukmini. She's also very senior of all of Krishna's wives. And so she was a bit jealous when Rukmini got this parajata flower. So Satyabama had developed an inferiority complex because Rukmini had this parajata flower. So Satyabama also wanted to get a flower from Krishna. So Krishna could understand this competitive nature of his wives, and he he when Satyabama said like this, he just smiled. Yeah. So when Satyabama said she wanted a flower from Krishna, Krishna said to her, "Oh, why are you just asking for only one flower? I would like to give you a whole tree of parajata flowers." And Krishna had brought Satyabama with him just for this purpose, so that she could collect the parajata tree with her own hand. So these parijata flowers are very, very heavenly. They, they have a beautiful smell, and it, all the way from heaven, even the bees from heaven come to the earth just at, to get that honey from the parijata flower. <laughs> Mm. So, 
When, Pad when Satyabhama took the tree from the heavenly planets, then the demigods, including Indra, became irritated. They didn't like it that she just take she just took the tree without their permission. So Satyabhama took the tree without asking and that there is n there's no Parijata trees on earth. So it's it's the tree usually only grows in heaven. So when they saw Satyabhama take the tree without asking anyone, then they they were angry and they they they, they wanted to stop her from taking it. And they, they, they tried to stop Krishna, they tried to fight with Krishna to stop him from taking this tree. And they thought, actually, they were thinking, the demigods were thinking, oh, Krishna is just controlled by his wife. Just see, he's, because of his wife, Satyabhama, he's taking this tree. He's just a henpecked husband. Actually, actually Krishna wanted Satyabhama to take the tree because he knew the demigods, including Indra, had become proud. And they were not remembering Krishna as the Supreme Lord. They were thinking they are the King of Heaven and Krishna is under them. So when, when they saw Krishna taking this tree of Satyabhama, then there was a fight between Krishna and the demigods. But as usual, Krishna won and he brought the tree chosen by his wife, he brought the tree to the earth planet and he brought it to Dwarka. So Satyabhama took, to, took the tree to the palace where she lives and she has a garden there and she had the tree put there in, in her garden. <laughs> And because that Parijata tree was in her garden, the whole house of Satyabhama became very, very beautiful. So they didn't just bring the tree. They brought the tree from heaven down to earth, but with the tree came also the fragrance of the flowers of that tree. And then so many bees also came from the, they also came to earth because they were searching after the honey and that fragrance of that tree, the flowers on that tree. This behavior of Indra, Indra fighting against Krishna, this was not very pleasing to great devotees like Sukadeva Goswami. Indra had come to Krishna in the beginning asking Krishna to help 
because of the demon Bomashura. And Krishna had fought with Bomashura and killed him and got back the earrings and brought them back to heaven. So Indra should have been grateful for Krishna's doing all that for him. So Indra should have been grateful that Krishna did all that service for him, but when Krishna took the tree, then he got angry and he fought with Krishna. So this was in, this was selfish on the part of Indra. He shouldn't have been so selfish to think the tree belonged to him. In the beginning, when Krishna came there to bring the earrings, Indra had bowed his head to Krishna and offered prayers at the lotus feet of Krishna. But when, when Krishna gave back the earrings to Mother Aditi and when Krishna had killed Bomasura, so Indra had no more need for Krishna, then he changed, he became a different person. He wasn't so humble anymore. So materialistic people are often like that. They're only interested in their own profit. So in order to get some profit, to get what they want, they'll offer any kind of, they'll do anything, be re very respectful to someone. But once they get what they want, then they're not friends anymore. They don't, they won't do anything for you. So, rich people, the people who are rich men on this planet, they're often like that. But not only on this planet, even when we go to the heavenly planets, we find people like Indra and the demigods, they're also like that. So if people get too much money that makes them selfish, they become very selfish. So if people become when people become selfish then they won't, they won't be, want to be devotees, they won't want to be Krishna conscious. So Sukadeva Goswami understood this point, he understood the danger of too much material opulence. So, too much material opulence is a disadvantage for, for Krishna consciousness. If we want spiritual life, we have to be careful not to be too proud. So after Krishna defeated Indra, then Krishna was back in Dwarka 
and he had the 16,100 girls, the princesses, all brought there to be in Dwarka, and he, Krishna is going to marry them all. So Krishna expanded himself 16,100 times. So there were 16,100 Krishnas and he married each of the princesses in different palaces at the same time. And he picked the auspicious time for the marriage. And so they were all married at the auspicious time. So by doing this, Krishna showed that he is actually the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And Krishna showed there's nothing impossible for him. He is all-powerful and he is omnipresent, he is everywhere and he is imperishable. He doesn't get old, he doesn't die. So, so when we hear this pastime, we shouldn't think, oh, it's, it's, it's impossible. We, we should understand nothing is impossible for Krishna. He can do anything he wants. So Krishna arranged palaces for each of the queens, 16,100 queens, and Krishna arranged each of them would have their own palace and their own gardens and furniture and other paraphernalia. There is nothing to equal it in this world. So you should understand there is no exaggeration in this story, in this pastime from the Srimad Bhagavatam. It's all true. And the queens of Krishna, who Krishna married, all these queens, they were all expansions of the goddess of fortune Lakshmi ji. And Krishna, Krishna lived with them in different palaces and he treated them exactly the same way an ordinary man would treat his wife. So Krishna is the, we should remember always, Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but he's playing exactly like a human being. And at the same time, he shows his opulence, his extraordinary opulence, because he marries more than 16,100 queens and, and, more, and he gives each of them a palace. 
และตรงนี้เนี่ยพระองค์ทรงแสดงถึงความมั่งคั่งของพระองค์โดยการเข้าพิธีสมรสกับเจ้าหญิงทั้งหมด 16,100 พร้อมๆทั้งนี้ราชวังให้กับแต่ละนาง He behaved with the queens just like an ordinary man. Then he strictly followed the relationship between husband and wife. Yeah, in every home, in ordinary homes, there's husband and wife. And they live together and they follow the religious principles. ในทุกบ้านเนี่ยก็จะมีการปฏิบัติตามกฎเกณฑ์ความสัมพันธ์ระหว่างสามีภรรยา So it's very difficult to understand the characteristics of the personality of Godhead, Lord Krishna, who is the supreme Brahman. เป็นสิ่งที่เขาแต่ได้ยากมากเกี่ยวกับบุคลิกลักษณะของบุคลิกภาพสูงสุดแห่งพระเจ้าเซกิชนาพระองค์ทรงเป็น Even demigods like Brahma cannot understand the transcendental pastimes of Krishna. And the wives of Krishna were so fortunate because their husband is the supreme personality of Godhead. คือมีความโชคดีมากเพราะว่าพวกเขาเนี่ยได้พระองค์เนี่ยมาเป็นสวามีของตน At the same time, their their husband, they, 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 even Brahma and the other demigods, they did not know the identity of Lord Krishna. They could not understand the identity of the husband of all of these wives. แต่คนอื่นเช่นพระพงศ์หรือว่าเราเทวดาอื่นเนี่ยยังรู้ไม่ถึงบุคลิกภาพแห่งแห่งพระองค์ So in their dealings with hus as husband and wife, Krishna and his queens, they would smile and they would talk and they would joke and sometimes they would embrace and 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 their conjugal relationships would develop in this way. แล้วก็ภรรยาของพระองค์เนี่ยพระองค์ก็ทรงมีความสัมพันธ์ในฐานะสามีภรรยาพระองค์ก็ทรงยิ้มการคุยการตลกการอบกอดกันแล้วก็มีความสัมพันธ์ในความรักไปอีกงานพัฒนาไปเรื่อยๆ So Krishna and his queens they enjoy transcendental happiness in their home in their household life. การ Krishna แล้วก็บรรดาราชินีทั้งหลายเนี่ยก็รื่นเริงกับความสุขในชีวิตคฤหัส And each and every queen had thousands of maid servants engaged for her service. But each of the queens, they all wanted to personally serve Krishna. They wouldn't let the servants do it. They would personally serve Krishna. แต่ว่าราชินีทั้งหมดเนี่ยเขามีความตั้งใจที่จะรับอยากจะรับใช้กฤษณาด้วยตัวของพวกเขาเอง Each one of them used to receive Krishna personally when he would enter the palace. แต่ว่าพวกพระนางเนี่ยจะต้อนมาต้อนรับกฤษณาด้วยตัวของพวกเขาเองตอนที่กฤษณาเข้ามาในราชวัง And when Krishna would enter the palace, then they would invite Krishna to sit on a nice seat on a nice couch, and they would worship him with all kinds of paraphernalia. And they would wash his lotus feet with Ganga water. And they would offer him betel nuts and massage his legs. So in this way, they would give Krishna some relief from the tiredness which he may felt after being away from home. 
แล้วก็พวกพวกนางเนี่ยก็ทําให้กริชนาเนี่ยทรงหายจากความเหนื่อยล้าที่ได้ออกไปข้างนอก And they would fan him and offer him fragrant essential floral oil. And they would give Krishna a beautiful flower garland. And they would dress his hair, and they would ask him to lie down to take rest. And they would bathe him, and they would feed him palatable dishes. And each of the queens would do all of these things. They did not wait for the maid servants to do it. So this way, Krishna and his queens were showing ideal householder life on this planet Earth. All right. So that's the end of chapter fifty-nine. We're going to go on to chapter sixty. Krishna teases Rukmini. So once upon a time, Krishna, the supreme personality of Godhead, who is the bestower of all knowledge upon all living entities, from Brahma down to the insignificant ant, was sitting in the bedroom of Rukmini. องค์พระขวานสริกรชนาผู้ประทานความรู้ทั้งหมดให้แด่มวลชีวิตเริ่มจากพระพรมลงไปจนถึงมดตัวเล็กๆตรงประทับอยู่ในห้องนอนของรุกมินีผู้ปฏิบัติรับใช้พระองค์ So Rukmini was engaged in the service of her husband, the Supreme Lord, along with all of her assistant maid servants. And Krishna was sitting on the bedstead of Rukmini, and the maid servants were fanning him with chamaras. So Rukmini, remember, she is the first wife of Lord Krishna, and he has his greatest love for Rukmini. She is a very great devotee. So Lord Krishna deals with Rukmini. Just like a just like perfect husband. So there are many philosophers who say that the absolute truth. They say about the absolute truth that God cannot do this. They cannot do that. They place conditions on the absolute truth. And they say, "Oh God, he doesn't have incarnations. No, he won't have any incarnations, and that, that he can never have a human form." So, this is not correct to think to place restrictions on the absolute truth is not right. Yeah, and that's why it's not right. 
กำหนดเกี่ยวกับพระเจ้าสูงสุด And you cannot put conditions on God. We have our imperfect judgment, and we're placing our own judgment on God. It's not proper. God means the supreme, absolute truth. He's all powerful. He's omnipresent. He's the personality of Godhead. Hare Krishna, Archana. Archana. Hare Krishna, Archana. Archana. Hare Krishna, Archana. Hare Krishna, k u m a r a s you hear me? Oh, where did you go? Oh, I don't know. It's happened like this again with my computer. What's going okay. on? What are you doing? Nothing, k u m a r a s It's just internet problem, I think. Okay, so we're we're saying that you cannot place restrictions on God. God can do anything He wants. He is all powerful, and if He wants to be a human being, He can be a human being. พระองค์เนี่ยทรงมีพลังอำนาจทั้งหมดถ้าพระองค์อยากจะเป็นมนุษย์เนี่ยพระองค์ก็สามารถเป็นมนุษย์ได้ He he does he he can create the whole material world and he maintains it and he can destroy it พระองค์ทรงสามารถที่จะสร้างโลกมนุษย์นี้มาได้ทรงสร้างได้ทรงรักษาได้และทรงทำลายได้เหมือนกัน So if he wants to become as a human being he can also come in this world just like a human being It's stated in the Bhagavad Gita that whenever there are, whenever there's decline in the religious practice, then at that time the Lord comes. ได้บอกไว้ในพระวจน์กิตาเหมือนกันว่าบอกว่าเมื่อใดเราแต่ที่มีการขัดแย้งในการปฏิบัติหน้าที่หรืออาชีพการงานของมนุษย์เนี่ยในเวลานั้นเนี่ยพระองค์จะทรงเสด็จลง So Krishna is not forced to come to this world. He comes by his own choice. พระเจ้าเนี่ยทรงไม่ได้ถูกบังคับให้มาในโลกมนุษย์นี้พระองค์ทรงด้วยการเลือกของพระองค์เอง He comes to establish, re-establish the the religious principles. At the same time, he will remove all the disturbing people, the demons who are disturbing the situation. So Krishna comes in the, his eternal form as Lord Krishna. He appears in the dynasty of the Yadus. So Krishna was living in Dwarka with his queens, and his principal queen was Rukmini. And Rukmini was living. She had Krishna provided a wonderful palace for her. It was furnished very beautifully. 
ราชวงศ์ราชวังที่นางอาศัยอยู่เนี่ยก็มีการตกตกแต่งแล้วก็เจริญจรัสมีรัศมีของอันนี้มันสวยงามมาก There were many curtains of lace all hanging from the ceiling, and the whole palace was lit by the effulgence of different jewels. And there were flower gardens, flower gardens there in her palace. There were flower, flower gardens, and they had beautiful scented flowers like Malika and Chameli, which are considered the most fragrant flowers in India. So there were many of these plants blooming, and they were making the palace very beautiful. And because of all the fragrant flowers, there was also groups of bees humming around. And in the night, there would be a beautiful moonshine, which would glitter through the holes in the windows. And there were many flowered heavenly flower trees, just like we heard the Parijata. Had also come there, and the mild wind brought the fragrance of these flowers everywhere. And incense was burning in the palace, and the the, the, the smoke was coming out of the holes in the window. And, and in the palace, in the palace rooms, there were mattresses which were covered with beautiful white bed sheets. And the bedding was very soft. And the sheets were very white, like milk foam. So Lord Krishna was sitting here in the palace very comfortably, and he was enjoying the service of Rukmini. And Rukmini had her assistant. So many maid servants were there helping her. And Rukmini was very happy to get the opportunity just to serve her husband. She could understand her husband was the supreme personality of Godhead, and she wanted to serve him personally. So she took the chamara from the hand of the maid servant, and she began to fan Krishna herself. So that chamara, the handle of the chamara was made of gold, and it was covered with valuable jewels. But when Rukmini took it in her hand. 
it became even more beautiful. Rukmini's hand, all of her fingers were were set with beautiful jeweled rings. And she wore ankle bells which made a very sweet sound when she moved. And Rukmini's raised breasts were smeared with kumkum and saffron. So, so the reflection of the reddish color coming from her breasts, it, it, made, the, it made her look even more beautiful. And Rukmini had high hips which were decorated with a jeweled lace girdle and a locket of great effulgence hung on her neck. So, she, although she was, she was engaged in the service of Lord Krishna, but at that time she was actually old enough to have grown up children. So her body was, was so beautiful, it was beyond the, it couldn't compare to anything in the three worlds. So she had a very beautiful face and curling hair on her head. And she, she had beautiful earrings. Oh, she wore beautiful earrings. And she has a smiling She's smiling and her necklace of gold all combined to shower nectar on everyone. So Rukmini was not just any ordinary woman, but she was actually the original goddess of fortune. And she's always engaged in the service of the lotus feet of Lord Narayan. So the pastimes between Rukmini and Krishna and Dwarka are not different from those of Narayan and Lakshmi. So Narayan and Lakshmi, of course, they're the lords of the Vaikuntha and they're, they live in great opulence. So Rukmini and Krishna were also living in opulence. So 
But the pastimes of Radha and Krishna in Vrindavan are different. They are very simple and rural, quite different from the mood of Dwarka. <coughs> So Rukmini was unusually bright and Krishna was very much satisfied with her behavior. So Krishna saw that when Rukmini was given a parijata flower by Narada Muni, at that time Satyabhama had become envious of her. So at that time Satyabhama also demanded to get a flower like that from Krishna. And in order to pacify her, Krishna had to promise to give her a whole tree. And so Krishna kept his promise and he brought the Parijata tree down to earth from heaven. So Krishna, after that Krishna expected that because Satyabhama had been given a tall tree that Rukmini would also want something. So Krishna was wondering, what will Rukmini want now? But Rukmini didn't say anything. She was always grave and she was always satisfied in her service to Krishna. But Krishna wanted to see her a little agitated and so he, he made a plan to see her beautiful face in, when she gets angry, when she gets a bit irritated. Now Krishna has more than 16,100 wives and he used to behave with each of them with very nice affection. So Krishna would create a situation between himself and his wife in which the wife would criticize him. Because the wives all had so much love for him, so they would, they would get, their irritation was due to the love which they had for Krishna. So Krishna would enjoy this when they would get angry with him. But in this case, Krishna couldn't find any fault with Rukmini, couldn't find anything to complain about her. Because Rukmini was always very serious and always engaged in his service. Rukmini <laughs> 
So Krishna was smiling at her, and he has also great love for her, and he began to speak to her just to make her angry. So Rukmini was the daughter of a powerful king called King Bismaka. So when Krishna spoke to Rukmini, he didn't address her this time as the princess. Oh, sorry, he didn't address her as Rukmini, but instead he addressed her as a princess. And so Krishna says to her, Oh, my dear princess, it's very surprising. So many great personalities in the royal order wanted to marry you. And although not all of them were kings, all possessed the opulence and riches of the king. And these men were all well behaved, they were learned, they were famous among kings, they were good looking in their bodily features and personal qualifications. And they were liberal, they were very powerful in strength and advanced in every respect. They were not unfit in any way. And over and above that, your father and your brother had no objection to you marrying any of them. And they gave their word of honor that you would be married with Sishupal. And the marriage was sanctioned by both his parents and your parents. And that Sishupal was a great king. And he was very lusty and mad after you to enjoy your beauty. And Krishna said, I think if he had have married you, I think he would have always remained with you just like your faithful servant. Okay, so we're going to stop here today. Are there any questions? Mm, Guru Maharaj, I got a question. Oh, really? Guru Maharaj, when we when we hear about this, uh, like how wife should should serve the husband like that, in the in the previously, the wife they don't have to work outside or something like that. But the person in this in this age, 
like women will also be working outside and all. So the service to the husband uh, that is suitable for uh, for this day situation, what, what should it be, Guruji? Well, you know, it's it's not that you have to work. If you get married, you know, get married, usually the wife will have a child or two. So when you get married and have children, you have to take care of your children. Mm. It's not that the wife has to always go to work. It's not actually good for the woman to go out to work all the time. Woman's place is more to be at home. Mm. To take care of the home and to cook and to clean. Just like your mother. Your mother doesn't go out to work, does she? No, she no. never works. No. She's a married woman. She had children. And she would take care of the children and the home. But uh, financially, Guru Maharaj, if the husband not able to support financially very nicely, so, well, if th that's just greed, that you want more money, that's not very good. You, you should be satisfied with what's provided by the grace of Krishna. To always want more money is not very good. We're just reading, we heard people who have too much money, they become proud. Mm -hmm. Okay. Bomasura. Okay. Bomasura, he was always wanting more money. <laughs> yeah, right. You should be happy and just to have a husband and to live in family life. Mm. Cook and clean, worship the deity. Not that you have to go out to work every day. This, of course, that's a perversion of Kali Yuga. You say, oh, you have to go out to work, husband money is not enough. You'll never have enough. You never will never be enough. That's the problem. You always want more. Greed for more. You have to be careful for that. So, family life is, you know, actually the Vedic culture is that the woman should be at home. Mm. You can be at home, you can always work at home, find something to do at home. <laughs> Not that you have to go out to work every day. Go out to work all day. Then if you have a child, who's going to take care of your child? Your grand, your mother, the, the grandmother. It's not proper. And when you go, when you go out to work, it's not so good because you're working with men. You're, you're around other men and so on, you get influenced by other men and you become, and you become disturbed. Other men may joke with you, flirt with you, like that. There's always dangers. So the safest thing is for the woman to be at home. That when women are, are at home and take care of the family, then you won't get divorced so much. The reason why you get so much divorce is because women go out to work a lot. Thank you.
Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, Dhanavad Panam, please accept my humble obeisances, all glory to Srila Prabhupada. อาจารย์ค่ะแปลให้พี่หน่อยนะคะคือพี่เคยได้ยินมาว่าเอ่อลูกมณีอ่ะค่ะมีความเหมือนกับไม่ชอบแต่ว่าทําไมเขาถึงแบบว่าดูเหมือนไม่ชอบกันอะไรอย่างเงี้ยค่ะแล้วก็จะมีลีลาบางอย่างของที่วินดาวันอย่างเช่นมหาลักษ
So the dangers of the material world, they come and go. So when there's dangers, you control your senses. When there's no danger, then you don't control your senses. But if you do self-realize, if you do spiritual practice, then you control your senses all the time. Okay, Vaishnavi Mataji has a question. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, yeah, I have, I have seen in South India, uh, Krishna, Rukmini, Satyabhama, and they sometimes uh, do the marriage ceremony of Rukmini and Krishna, uh, like uh, this. And uh, I was wondering, uh, there is not much of uh, Radha and Krishna in South India. Uh, is it uh, because Lord Krishna took birth in North India or... Uh... No, 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 no. It's because it, it's... the. You see, you have to understand that the mood of Radha Krishna is very confidential and it was only revealed by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He brought out uh, this uh, important feature of devotional service, the mood of the gopis. So the mood of the gopis is, is not recognized like in the, in the, in the, in the, in the Sri Vaishnava Sampradaya. But if you go to Nambarka, Nambarka Sampradaya, they know about the gopis. They worship Radha and Krishna. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he also knew about Radha and Krishna and he got it from Madhavendra Puri. Madhavendra Puri was the one who introduced it into the line of Madhva Acharya, the actual position of Radharani and the worship of the gopis, how the gopis worship Krishna. Yes. Okay, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, very interesting. So it's, it's very different. Uh, actually, of course, of, you have to understand there's different, it's a different rasa. There's uh, Swakya rasa and Parakya rasa. So the, the relationship, one is in marriage and one is without marriage. So in, yeah. in the spiritual world, the pleasure between Krishna and Radha and the gopis without marriage is greater. But in the material world, the relationship between men and women without marriage, that's the lowest. So uh, in, in this, this is not, this is a very confidential fact. So sometimes even the Gaudiya Vaishnavas, even like Jiva Goswami, he had Radha and Krishna married because uh, People were, you know, they didn't like it, the fact that Krishna was having pastimes with the gopis without marriage. The parakya ras was something which they didn't want, they didn't like it, they thought it's a bad example, it's not good, that people will follow this, if people start to imitate this, it will be very bad. And so Jiva Goswami, when he wrote his book, he actually had Radha and Krishna married. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Although actually Radha and Krishna didn't marry, but Jiva Goswami, when he wrote about the pastime, he had them married because the people who were there at that time, they, they were so much, they could not accept this Parakya Ras. So he had Radha and Krishna married, and then it was easier for them to understand Radha and Krishna. Oh. Okay, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, but, but now in Kali...